I'll tell you the truth. There is tremendous power available unto you in the love of the Father for you. Most of my Christian life, I lived as a fool, thinking that it was all about my love for, the God, for God. At 19 years old, I started going to church. I was enraptured with great feelings, great times of worship. I was reading and learning the word, and I heard the gospel of forgiveness of sins and an escape of damnation and a restoration of me with God. But no one ever showed me or exemplified a life whereby it was all about the love of the Father, that my source of power over every addiction, over greed, over covet covetousness, what I struggled with is covetousness, greed, lust, envy, jealousy. I was wanting so many things. I was at 19 and 20 years old. God became to me a means to the end of trying to get wealthy, trying to uh, attain and acquire things in order to be healed. God was my healer. God himself is your healer. God is the end. God is not a means to an end. God is the end. And so it became a really perverted relationship with God from the foundation where you would think that like many people the greater your expression of love for God and all the things you're doing for God whether Bible study community service praising him worshiping him thanking him it's all a perverted effort my love for God is a means to the end of God doing for me what I think needs to be done for me to be whole. And that's why, my friend, I spent years and years and years, possibly up to two decades of my initial life as a Christian, continually falling on my face, just like Peter, who was always trying to assert himself in his love for Jesus, whereby he ended up denying Jesus three times. He ended up cutting off the ear of one of Jesus's captors in the garden. He was continually out of line, trying to keep Jesus from going to the cross where Jesus would say to Peter, get behind me, Satan, for you, not, you do not love the things of God, but the things that be of men. Peter was more interested in what he could get out of Jesus than what Jesus was there for him to do, to demonstrate the, the exceedingly greatness of his love for Peter. I had an amazing ride tonight with a lady named Cynthia. Cynthia is a uh, married woman whose husband and her were in a serious car accident where the guy who hit them T-boned another lady, flipped over, hit her and her husband's car. Her husband looked and appeared to be dead. She said she looked over and he was slunched over unconscious and someone came to her aid, asked her to get out of the car. She was, she was fine, she was alive, but she wasn't sure about the husband. Anyway, she said she looked into the back seat and she saw someone in the back dressed in all white that was clean shaven. It was some sort of angel, I suppose. But when the person who was trying to come to Cynthia's aid asked her to get out of the vehicle, she said, I'm not leaving my husband's side. To which the person in the back, dressed in all white, 
actually spoke to her. She said she saw it with her own eyes. It was someone sent from God, an angel perhaps. But this individual, this being actually said, it is okay, you, your husband will survive. So this lady, Cynthia, turns out she's a believer in God. She was traveling from Arizona to Colorado. She brought her Bible. She was excited about going to church with her daughter. But she admitted to me that she is still struggling with an addiction to cigarettes, still struggling and battling with cigarettes. And another thing she mentioned was that she's believed she's, you know, we're all sinners, something you hear commonly spoken of by people. She's struggling with cigarettes and we're all sinners. <laughs> If you are some type of person like this that is struggling with a sin, maybe it's cigarettes, maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's drugs, maybe it's gambling or porn, maybe it's cursing, foul language, maybe it's just rampant, gluttonous eating, and you're proclaiming yourself to be a sinner. Well, it's no wonder why your life is a contradiction of what you know to be right. You are living out a manifestation of the identity that you're proclaiming over yourself. What happens is people experience a new birth. They call on the name of Jesus for salvation. It's a powerful experience with a lot of feeling. Little do they know they have been translated. They have been moved from one dimension to another. They were once darkness, now they're light. They were once unrighteous, now God calls you the righteousness of God. You were once a child of wrath, and now you become a child of God, powerfully so. Now that you're not entered into the realm of God by grace through faith in Jesus, you are now all of these things by virtue of the truth of God. You are the child of God. You are the righteousness of God. You are a holy one, beloved of him. You are now a minister of reconciliation, an ambassador of Christ. You're an overcomer. You're a soldier of God. But yet what happens is the person who's translated into the now realm of God by salvation that comes through faith and by grace, the grace and power of God, you still feel like you're a sinner, even though you're now in the realm of God, you're now a son or a daughter, and you are still led by your feelings. My friend, when you're on a boat and you get off of a boat onto dry land, you are now in a new realm with access to new things. You're no longer limited by the realm of the boat. You get onto dry land and your legs still feel wobbly. It still feels like you're on a boat, but you're no longer on a boat. You're living, a, you're, you're living in accordance of the realm that you came off of, even though you're in a new realm, you have to know the truth. You're no longer on a boat. And the same be it with a Christian. Through Jesus Christ, you're no longer a sinner. You're no longer wretched. You're no longer um, called to um, struggle with an identity that is no longer the title over you. You must ignore your feelings and declare the truth about who you now are in Christ. Irregardless of how you feel or irregardless of the things you're struggling with, the power of your identity and the power of agreement and alignment with your new identity is the only thing that's going to break you free and set you free from all the things that are still lingering and the feelings and the temptations and the desires only can be broken off by an adherence and an alignment and agreement with who you now are in the love of the Father. And so with Cynthia, Cynthia, I share these things 
I said, you are a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things are made brand new. You just need to align your words and your soul with the truth about where you stand spiritually with God through Jesus. I said, you're struggling with cigarettes because you're still proclaiming an identity that doesn't belong to you. According to your faith, it's being done to you. You're declaring yourself to be a sinner. Therefore, you're still going to struggle with uh, sinful appetites. All you have to do is shift your mentality and belief system into the realm where you now exist with God. I am now standing here, the righteousness of God. And as a son of God, and in the love of the Father for me, you notice that? It's not my love for the Father that sets me free. It's the love of the Father that I find power to break free of the things of the world. And I shared with her in her Bible. I said, let's go to the back. In her uh, luggage, she was going to the airport. She had her Bible. Turns out she's studying 1 John this summer. Perfect. That was the, the scripture God gave me was 1 John 2.15. She's like, I got chills. I said, me too. So we opened it up. The Lord gave me 1 John 2.15 where it says, love not the world. Do not love the world or the things of the world. And I said, look at this. Do not love the world or the things of the world. That could be cigarettes. Do not love the world or, the, or cigarettes. Right? It says, he that loveth the world and the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I turned to Cynthia. I said, look, it's the love of the Father for you that sets you free from the things of the world. You're sitting here trying to display a love for God and thinking that's going to set you free. It's not your love for God that sets you free. It's God's love for you. It's God's love of you. It's God's acceptance over you through the Son that is the power of God. The power of God is contained within the correct alignment with the reality as it now is through Jesus. And the love of the Father for you, you're going to easily break free of that addiction. I said, try this. Every time you puff on a cigarette here going forward, declare, I am a daughter of God. I am the one he loves. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. See how long the addiction lasts. <laughs> when you're declaring the truth, nothing can hold on that formerly was a part of a wrong identity. The power of the love of God for you as you're declaring it openly, even as you would do something like smoke a cigarette, which is, factually speaking, it's not a part of your new identity. It's a contradiction of a lifestyle that used to be an expression of someone who doesn't know who they are. Smoking is something that is a perversion of the truth. You're trying to find satisfaction in something that's destroying you. So now that you're declaring the truth, I'm a daughter of God. I'm a daughter of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God. This power of God's love for you and this satisfaction that comes over you now extends through you and breaks off the things that never could or would satisfy and you find freedom. So I shared this with her. I had the chance to pray with her. I think I'm going to be going here in a second, so I'm going to wrap this up. I prayed with her at the back of my vehicle. The Lord showed me healing is taking place upon layers, and I'm openly believing this for you. God's healing is hitting your life on lever levels and in layers, starting with your soul, starting with the correct foundation of the gospel, that you, by grace through faith, are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You must foundationally start where Jesus left off, and that's tr transferring you into the realm of God's family. Your mind, your soul, and your words must, um, must now align with that new spiritual reality about yourself. You might be just like her. You have been declaring something that is not even the truth anymore over your life and wondering why you're struggling outwardly with perversions and sins and all kinds of struggles. It's, it's God's struggle, and he's already won this 
war on your behalf. Now it's up to you to align with this truth and begin to declare an identity through which now not only will you manifest a destiny through a clear identity, first things first, God will break off of you, starting with the layer of the soul. He's going to bring healing to your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, because it's the truth actually will affect you on every level and every aspect of the soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions will be taken over through this truth of the gospel. And then it's going to move outward to your body. Anything that was ailing your body or any addiction that was a perverted form of satisfaction, peace, or joy, or um, satisfying some anxieties that you might have been feeling. You, you ran to the bottle, you ran to the drug, you ran to the smoke. God's going to break that off of you because those things were the counterfeit forms of what could never satisfy, they could never heal you. The pills, the medications, the doctor's visits. No, it's the love of the Father for you that translates you into the realm of the Son. Now you're a child of God. The Bible even says, whosoever believes in him, to them he gave the power to become a son of God. So now I live my life declaring that truth. I own that. I take that personally. I receive that. Who am I not to receive the truth of who I am now through Jesus? So I align with that truth, and it's, it's bringing me into the realm of health, and it's working its way out into your life, even to the point where you're going to prosper in other things, in your relationships, in your, your studying, in your learning, in your areas of interest, art or music, your passions. Maybe you're, you're into writing or... Uh, singing or, or business or whatever it's going to be. It's going to be your life is now going to be set free as you're a child of God. He's going to move through your life in healing in every layer. And I, I saw Cynthia being healed on the level of the soul today and the, and the body because she was still recovering from this horrible accident. And then outwardly, God says, even as your soul prospers, so shall you prosper and be in health. God's will for you is prosperity on every level, starting with the soul. Only the prosperity of the soul has the power to bring prosperity to the health and prosperity and wealth. Wealth can never bring prosperity to the, uh, the body or the soul. Wealth is a weak form of prosperity that you cannot climb uphill with wealth. But when you have the soul prospering, you can go downhill with it. You can knock out the health. You can attain wealth all for the point of making him look good. Your prosperity makes God look good. Your satisfaction, your living at peace, your living full of joy, your childlike faith and exuberance for life, living with a dream and excitement, a hope and a future, that's the genius that God restored unto you through the power of Jesus. And we are to be like children again, happy as we go through life, happy as we eat in accordance with what the Spirit would have us eat, exercise as the Spirit would have us exercise with joy, not this drudgery or begrudging or bemoaning or burden. It's no, the burden has been lifted. I'm free to be who I am as one who is loved of God. Now I'm seeing who I am, I'm seeing what I'm worth, I'm seeing a pathway into my destiny through standards that the Holy Spirit is showing me. Don't go here, we go here. Don't eat this, eat this. Work out here, right? Don't don't exercise, right? It, there's, there's forms of places the body should not be going, places the body should be going, people should be hanging out with not, I gotta go, bless you.